Hello everyone. In this section, we will introduce moving average and weighted moving average. So basically, if we take a look at the calculation of moving average and weighted moving average, they have similarities. Both of them are based on number of periods in the moving average. But the difference is the moving average is a simple mathematic average. Well, weighted moving average assign different uh, data point with different weight. And uh, if you want to talk with the similarity between the two, we can see moving average is basically a special type of weighted moving average where each number has exactly the same weight. Now, take a look at an example of the moving average and the weighted moving average calculation. Now, assuming that we have the number of cars sold in past four days as 4251, and we plan to forecast the next day's sales using a four-period moving average and a four-period weighted moving average with weight 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, and 0 0.1. To calculate the moving average, we just simply calculate the average of these four numbers. We add up all the four numbers and divide by four, give us a result of three. For the weighted moving average, where we multiply each number with the corresponding weight. So assuming four is the most recent data, which has the highest weight, 0.4, and one is the oldest number, which has the smallest weight, 0.1. So the reason why in weighted moving average, a more recent data will have a relatively larger weight is that we suppose the most recent data will have much more influence on the data of future. And uh, the older a data is, the less influence it will, has, it will have on the future data. And we mentioned earlier the relationship between moving average and weighted moving average can be simplified as moving average is a simplified weighted moving average where each number has exactly the same weight. To calculate the moving average, since we have four numbers, we assign the 100% evenly among the four numbers. Each of the numbers will have a weight of 0 0.5, 0 0.25. So we multiply 0.25 with each of the number and add them up will be the same as we calculate the moving average by divide the sum of all the numbers by the number of numbers. Now let's take a look at an example and see how we moving from one time period to another time period during the forecasting process. Here we have the demand of past five period and uh, we are required to calculate the four period moving average for the demand of period six and period seven. Now, since this is a four period moving average, which means we only use the most recent four time period data to do the calculation. So although we are given the demand from period one to five, only period two to five's demand will be used in the calculation because period two to five are the most recent four time periods. Now, we look at these numbers and we calculate the demand forecast of time period six, which is the average of the demand from time period two to period five, which gave us a number of 41. Next, it said we are required to calculate the demand forecast for time period seven after we receive or get the real demand of time period six, which is 38. Now, after we have period six demand, now we see the most recent four time period is from period three to period six instead of period two to period five. Now two 
Pair 2 is not included in this most recent four time period. So we need to take it off. And we use the demand data from time period 3 to time period 6 to do the calculation. So we apply similar calculation. We just add up these four numbers and divide by 4 and get our demand forecast for next time period. Now, if we are required to use the weighted moving average, same four period weighted moving average to forecast the demand. Now, the weight are 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, and 0 0.1. To simplify the process, I just put the period six number here already. But we know that when we forecast period six demand at that time we only have demand from time period one to five and the most recent four time periods are time period two to five so we multiply each number with the corresponding weight and as mentioned in the given question 0.4 is the weight for the most recent data which is period five data and 0.1 is for the oldest data, which is period 2. So we have 0.1 times 40 plus 0.2 times 43 plus 0.3 times 40 plus 0.4 times 41. And we add it up, we get a forecast of period 6 demand equals to 41. And next, we need to calculate the demand forecast for period 7 after we receive the period 6 demand. So, as we did earlier, period 2 data will be removed from the calculation because it is not within the most recent four time period anymore. Now we use the demand from period 3 to period 6 to do the calculation. And as we get rid of the oldest data and edit the most recent data, the weight for each number will be changed because now the most recent data is period 6 data, which will have the calculation weight equals to 0.4. And for all the rest of them, the calculation or the corresponding weight will be shifted down for one position. And that is how we do this calculation. 